Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to Tiny ML Talks. Uh, my name is Evgeny Gusev. I am from uh, Qualcomm and also working um, in, in the Tiny ML Foundation. And uh, this is a Tiny ML Global Talk. Uh, today we have one of the Tiny ML strategic partner companies, Silicon Labs, who joined uh, Tiny ML Foundation recently. They, uh, it's, it's a very interesting company. Uh, they have a lot of uh, capabilities in the, uh, in the connectivity and provide solutions also now in the, in the uh, low power AI space. And, and I think we are very glad to have them uh, here today and share the, the latest and greatest uh, what they have and what they can uh, offer to this community and to, to the partners. So our speaker is Andrew Halstead. He is a senior field application engineer from Silicon Labs, and he's joining us uh, from, from UK. And uh, the title of the presentation is Building Tiny ML Applications with Silicon Labs EFR32MG24 Wireless SOC Platform. Next page, please, Andrew. So I think before we start, uh, as usual, it is... Uh, our pleasure to acknowledge Tiny strategic partners, starting from uh, analog devices, uh, Aeon devices, ARM. There is one more company who joined uh, recently. Uh, it's not on the list, AI, zip.ai. Then we have DeepLight, HM Pulse, Emza, PhotoHub, GreenWaves, Gravity, IBM, ImageMob, ITMIS, ClickerTech, Microsoft, uh, Nota.ai, NXP. OctoML Prophecy, Kixa, Qualcomm, uh, Reality.ai, uh, that was recently acquired by uh, Renaissance, by the way, Rickson Technology, Renaissance, SAP, uh, Seed Studio, SenseML, Silicon Labs. So these uh, two companies, they, they've done some collaboration recently, as uh, Andrew is going to highlight in his presentation, Sony, ST Microelectronics, Stream Analyze, Synaptic, Syncent, Sintient, and TDK. And this is a long and very diverse list. And, and, and if you're interested, uh, you, you can join and become also a partner or your company. <clears throat> so next page, a uh, couple of announcements. So next week, uh, we are going to have a special event. It's a tiny, tiny neuromorphic engineering forum. So this event is chaired by Professor Charlotte Frankel from uh, Tech University Delft and also an international committee there. So this event is going to overview um, the state of the art in uh, neuromorphic computer, neuromorphic engineering. There is a very strong list of speakers and companies who will be there. So um, if you're interested to, to get an idea of the latest and greatest in, in this field, just in, in, in three hours. I, I strongly encourage you to join. Um, registration is free. Thanks again to the, to the sponsor and strategic partners. And it's going to start on uh, September 27, 8, 8 a.m. Uh, Pacific time as usual. It will be a live event. I'm personally looking forward to it. It's, I think it's going to be a great way to, to see what happens in this field. It evolves very fast and, and, and learn. And then this will be a virtual event. And then uh, on the next page, you'll see that we also, we are very happy to go back to, to, uh, to in-person events. Um, on October 10, 12, we're going to have a three-day event. Uh, it's Tiny ML Europe, Middle East, and Africa Innovation Forum. Uh, it will take place in Cyprus, kind of in the middle of this Europe, Middle, middle East, and Africa uh, region. And... Uh, uh, this will be the value really to, to connect, unify, and grow the, the European, Middle East, and African community. Uh, it's, it's, in, it's going to be in a, in a great location. And uh, you see that uh, we have uh, great speakers there, great program. The, the keynotes will be given by Massima Panzi from ST and uh, Alberto San Giovanni Vincirelli uh, from, from uh, UC Berkeley, who, who also is very well known for the co-founding Cadence and, and Synaptis. Really a kind of great agenda and, and great event for, for networking. And I think at this point, we can move on to, to today's agenda. Uh, 
and you see that actually that we, we also have tiny ML communities growing. We have uh, over 10,000 people in, in, in kind of a five digit number in all our communities. And you're very welcome to join. You see a lot of announcements, events and partnerships happening there. And uh, just as a housekeeping, uh, uh, you don't need to, uh, th th this particular uh, presentation is going to be um, available next week on, on YouTube. So YouTube channel is also growing uh, very, very steadily. So we have close to 8,000 uh, subscribers there. So you can, you can subscribe there also for the notification. And there is kind of a lot, lot of uh, content uh, there as well. And it, at this point, it is my pleasure to introduce our speaker, uh, again, who is joining from, from UK today. So he, Andrew is a senior field engineer at Silicon Labs. Um, he's been with the company for four years. And before that, he's been in general with the semiconductor industry for 15 years. Uh, so his uh, background is in the, in the protocols, uh, wireless protocols, um, BLE, Wi-Fi. And uh, as many of us recently, he, he, he started to be more and more involved in embedded computing, embedded security, and uh, AI, ML, and tiny ML. And that's what uh, <clears throat> Andrew is going to uh, share with us today. So Andrew, the stage is yours. <clears throat> thank you very much for that uh, introduction. Um, yeah, thank you. I uh, really appreciate uh, giving the opportunity to, to speak to the community um and um yeah i hope um i hope everybody gets something out of this presentation i'm very pleased to be here so thank you thank you very much so the objective today for me was to um cover as much ground as possible um regrettably i won't have enough time to cover any one topic in detail and so i thought the most useful thing that i could do uh well from a silicon labs perspective was to actually show you the starting points you have when developing a, a IML application. So the plan is to start with a few slides to provide a quick overview, but then the plan is to kind of spend uh, the bulk of the time actually showing you the steps required to get up and running with both our partner solutions as well as our in-house toolkit uh, we have available. Um, you know, which path you choose would depend on, on your experience, but the, um, the workflows are suited to both the expert as well as the um, beginner. So, and then at the end of the presentation, I'll point you to sort of some labs um, and information where you can kind of look at uh, or investigate some of the topics uh, in more detail, cover today more in more detail. So yeah, thank you for being here. My contact details are on the on the this email as well. So if after the, the talk as well as the forums and all the other places, feel free uh, to reach out, and I'll be very very happy to uh, to engage with you on, on on that level as well. So so. Silicon Labs as a company. So um, first and foremost, for those who haven't heard of us, um, uh, in terms of who we are and kind of where we came from. So we are a £1 billion pure play uh, fabulous semiconductor company uh, with 100% focus in the IoT space. Uh, delivered through silicon and software platforms, we offer some of the lowest uh, power wireless connectivity solutions in the industry, uh, as well as advanced security and AIML um, integrations in our SOCs. Um, we work with uh, many partners across many market segments uh, and have a very strong presence uh, and contribute extensively within um, thriving uh, emergent ecosystems such as the smart home, uh, to, name, to name one. Um, the breadth and depth of our support for wireless protocols is extensive and market leading. Um, and when our, our first achieve, one of our most recent achievements was uh, uh, attaining PSA3 certification um, on uh, an offering we have called Secure Vault, which is uh, embedded security, basically. We now strive to push the boundaries of machine learning and thus uh, open up our SOCs to new and innovative use cases. And uh, yeah, we hope you can help us on that, on that journey. So uh, in terms of kind of our products, um, it's, it's worth touching on these first, I guess, before we, we jump into to any details. So um, if we start with the hardware, so we have what we term series one, sorry, series zero, one and two uh, products, um, the latest, greatest, um, surprisingly being uh, series two. Um, the first member of the series uh, of, of series two was um, 
was called the XG21, uh, and this was released a couple of years back. And the latest member is the XG24. Um, on these slides, we don't have uh, zero, 00 on there, but um, it's because the, uh, the main uh, focus products are, are, are Series 2, but also Series 1 is still, still very popular. And note when I say XG, uh, you'll see that's kind of a placeholder because we have different variants of the part depending on the protocol stack support. So we have like superset parts that support all the protocols, and then we have um, kind of subset parts that support um, uh, yeah, a subset of, 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 the, of the protocols. So you can see our Series 2 as kind of a, uh, a wireless SOC supporting all major standards-based 2.4 gig protocols, uh, uh, which comprise, uh, and they comprise of, of three major blocks, RF, MCU, and Secure Element as well. Um, but with the introduction of the XG24, we're now adding a fourth major block, which is uh, machine learning. So now in a single SOC, you have kind of the RF, the MCU, the Secure Element, and the machine learning hardware capabilities. So um, yeah. Um, we're very excited uh, about that addition to uh, to our uh, SOCs. Um, one thing I'd like to point out um, uh, is that although the XG24 is our flagship AIML uh, product, um, the actual software and tools themselves are, are common across our Series 1 and Series 2 products, although clearly there are significant advantages as to why you might want to use um, the XG24, which is due to the, uh, the highlighted uh, AIML accelerator um, uh, highlighted in the diagram. Uh, of course, yeah, selecting which part in our portfolio would, would largely depend on kind of your use case as usual, um, you know, whether, you know, and performance, of course, and, and the RAM usage required for your model. So flexible uh, memory footprint for all of our parts as well. So what's Silicon Labs doing and what's the benefit of taking one of our solutions? So uh, first and foremost, um, most um, machine learning products uh, are likely to need to communicate with something, often wireless. Um, and our SOCs support the widest portfolio of um, wireless protocols, um, meaning uh, they're incredibly flexible and, and future-proof. So for example, you could take one of our products and use it for, say, Bluetooth Low Energy um, in one project, and then you could um, use that same hardware uh, in another project where you wanted to use Zigbee, for example you can actually run um, both Zigbee and BLE at the same time in what we, what we term DMP, um, dynamic multi-protocol we call, um, is, is the kind of term we use. And that's basically sort of time slicing of the radio. So, But from an outward perspective, it appears as if both uh, are available, if you like, to connect to. So, uh, But if you look at the generally the protocols we do support, it's, it's, it's all of the, um, the leading major ones. You know, the Bluetooth BLE, 215.4, Zigbee Thread, Matter, Z-Wave, a proprietary Wisun and Sidewalk. So um, the major players in all of those. Um, I also mentioned in our previous slide that uh, the XG24, in the addition of this, this hardware co-processor, the MVP, um, uh, to give you an idea of the kind of performance enhancements you get with it, you get sort of eight times faster inferencing at around a sixth of the energy consumption. So obviously we'd expect tiny ML devices to be on the edge by the, the very name and um, therefore often um, you know, very uh, power conscious. So. In addition um, to this, over and above just hardware, we support um, ML tools um, uh, suited to both the experts as well as um, those who've never really even touched machine learning before. So. Um, Basically, anybody can get involved in this. So let's now have a look at the tools uh, in a bit more detail. So these are the workflows available. Um, I'm going to start from right to left. Um, uh, I think that makes the most sense, actually. So machine learning solutions is kind of the, uh, the category uh, that we... Uh, we name are uh, where effectively there is no uh, need to do anything. You're, uh, you have a binary that's already uh, you know, contains the model and, and maybe in the case of weight words, it contains all the, the right words that you want to identify. And then your application would kind of link into that binary. So it's kind of like a black box that's done and dusted um, that, that you don't need to do very much work for at all. So that would be pretty much a, 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 a one-stop shop kind of solution. Um, we then have the ML Explorer, which is kind of the category um, where we've teamed up with uh, experts, uh, specialists like SenseML, Edge Impulse, uh, MicroAI, and others in the pipeline 
but but here um this really opens you up to access to all the uh AI ML algorithms designed for you know by the sort of PhD uh, researchers uh, and, and these uh, algorithms designed for the cortex and processors. And then finally, we have ML Expert, and um, and one of the the tools we have uh, in this category is a kind of a homegrown toolkit. So we've developed this in house. Um, we call it our MLTK, um, and this provides a maximum maximum flexibility. Um, it's a, a self-serve, self-support Python package uh, available on GitHub uh, at the link uh, just uh, in the diagram. Uh, and we've created uh, this uh, reference package around the audio use case. So, uh, of course, it could be extended, modified, or you know, just kind of cherry-picked. But, but that's, uh, that's, uh, that's kind of uh, what we've done uh, so far. Um, so to give a bit more... Um, to give a, a, a kind of fit this to the, the kind of workflow, if you like. So obviously ML Solutions isn't there because it's done and dusted. Um, we then, um, so yeah, as part of the, the process, if you like, of creating a model, we, we, we obviously, uh, you know, you need to create the data set, train the model, uh, test the model, uh, and then convert the model into something that's usable by, uh, by your application. And here you'll see that um, in the case of the ML Explorer, the uh, the third party, uh, uh, so their GUI. So in the case of um, uh, Edge Impulse, it would be their kind of web front end. You know, they're responsible for the entire workflow, and um, and and they and, and you follow or they follow. They curate their sort of. They have their sort of storyboard style way of of creating uh, uh, a model. Uh, so everything is done in their portal, and then you have. Um, what I referred to before is kind of ML expert, which um, gives you a bit more flexibility, uh, obviously at the cost of, of kind of more complexity as well. So we have two, two versions, really. We have one where which we term bring your own data. So in this case, um, you create your own data set, but then use the tool to actually train the model, uh, test the model, and then uh, deploy the model. Um, and then uh, bring your own model. So um, yeah, here you are creating your own data set, training your own model. And then using our toolkit uh, to both test the model and then uh, convert that model into something that you can use in your application. I also wanted to quickly touch on the software architecture as well around uh, the uh, of yeah. So the enablement uh, of, of if you like our series one and two products is is kind of by virtue of SDK support for uh, TensorLight Micro. Um, as well as through our kind of set of developer tools. Um, I guess the point in this, uh, this slide is really to highlight that whether you use the MVP uh, processor or not, um, the same application APIs and all the logic uh, and, and all the tooling all sits in a kind of common, uh, common architecture. So um, it's kind of, if you like, the usage of, of our MVP in, in the XG24 is kind of largely transparent. Um, and you know where, say, kernels aren't supported, it will use the sort of the CM Cisneural Network libraries. Or, but, but where we do have support, it will be used in the uh, by the uh, hardware accelerator. So the XU24 basically is the one on the the, the right, and the uh, series one and two that don't support the MVP is on the left. And then finally, before I go into actually uh, showing you something, um, I want to just um, uh, highlight the development board I'm using. So we have a whole host of what we term funder boards, and they come in with various SOCs on. And we have one which is the XU24 on, and we get so another one of our, our funder boards. And what we mean really here is that, or that our funder boards are kind of small tag size development boards that that contain lots of sensors, basically. So in the case of the um, the MV24. Um, we have the uh, inertial sensor, uh, nine-axis inertial sensor. We have two digital microphones on it. Pressure sensor, indoor air quality and gas sensor. Relative humidity and temperature sensor. UV and ambient light and a hall effect. So we've got a lot of sensors there. And, and so, um, you know, it's the basis, obviously, is the inputs to the model, data, the data inputs to the model. You know, we, you know, you've got a good platform there to kind of uh, kind of work with. Um, for those, actually, who, who, who do uh, also... 
uh, have some of our older Thunderboards there uh, also available to use with our uh, our frameworks. But we would suggest um, the, the 24. Uh, that's the kind of uh, flagship one, as I said. So now this is kind of like a natural break where I've kind of finished the sort of brief intro and um, uh, going to go on to kind of showing you really how to connect into the platform. So if there's any kind of questions at this point, we can uh, we can take them there or I can kind of continue. Yeah, I thank you, Andrew, for this uh, uh, short but nice overview of, of, of the capabilities. There are a couple of questions on, 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 on Zoom. Uh, Scott is asking, when you indicate uh, sidewalk support, does this mean Amazon specific only yes. or does this uh, also support more uh, generic Allura uh, WN type of support? Uh, good, good question. Yeah, um, it's actually we don't support Laura per se, but we do support uh, FSK, which is part of it. And, and we do. Uh, so we work with uh, we have a module basically that supports sidewalk. So we do use Laura, but it's not our Laura, but everything else is kind of ours. So. So yeah, it is. Um, we we have a very close relationship with uh, with Amazon, and we we yeah we so we are supporting the Amazon sidewalk. Uh, there is a, a question from Sandeep. Are there any uses for TinyML and Matter combined? So that's a good question, actually. Um, I guess um, Matter is still quite early. <laughs> um, you know, the, 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 there will be um, uh, use cases, uh, probably security or, or some of the kind of use cases where, you know, um, giving positive results are, 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 are from, you know, AI, from ML rather than just being kind of, uh, well, uh, the so glass detectors can, for example, come in different forms. And, and when you start using machine learning, it's got a much better um, positive result than, uh, than the, some of the false positives you get in another solution. So I get, I, I certainly think that they're, they're going to be complementary, uh, but matter is still early and um, still evolving. So I, I certainly do see an overlap, a strong overlap there. Okay. Uh, there is a question from Bharat uh, uh, from India. He's saying, could you give some metrics on power consumption? Is it, are you going to answer it now or you, you'll, you'll do it during the, the demo part, which you're going to start soon? We have actually you lead me on to a nice little tool we have within our uh, development environment we, we have an energy profiler as we call it and and from that you're able to see exactly um how much uh, uh energy is being consumed by the soc and we can even code correlate it as well so you can see what functions are consuming what power so That's it great. gives you uh a good uh a tool to to really try and if you need to get power consumption down know where the areas of improvement uh, uh, can be. It's very difficult to give power consumption numbers because it is very use case uh, specific. So, you know, we, we it's tricky, but but we can very easily get at those numbers um, in our tool. So, um, yeah. No, I think uh, no, I think I think it's great that you have this capability to do kind of power measurements on the fly and also do partitioning by 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 different parts of the system. I think that, that that's great. And I have a follow-on question on this. I think um, I've seen uh, benchmarking from ML Perf or ML Ops, uh, or not ML Ops, uh, ML Commons, and I think Silicon Labs was part of it. Uh, um, but I, I don't recall the, the the numbers there. How does your solution compare to to other people, uh, hardware players who are in this game? I think in the ML. Uh, Perf, uh, tiny ML perf, uh, there were submissions from HT mm. Microelectronics, Cynthia, and I think I recall it was Silicon Labs and other companies. Kind of, can you refresh our memory or kind of at least qualitatively say like where your solution stands uh, against <clears throat> uh, other tiny ML uh, hardware providers? Definitely, you have a very strong uh, differentiation on the connectivity side. That's kind of your bread and butter. And yeah. on, on the tiny ML side uh, for, for, for this audience, uh, why would they kind of use uh, your, your solution versus um, other type of solutions? I mean, what I personally like in, in the two dev kits you show, like what you said, the, the power profiling, uh, you have some, uh, quite a few different sensors connected there. So you can kind of do different tiny ML modalities, like you said, temperature, gas, uh, and, uh, uh, vibrations, audio, and, and, and so on. But, but on, the, on the tiny ML engine itself, um, is there anything you can, you can elaborate a little yeah, bit? Yeah, we have, we have got some results. I know we've got some results. Um, 
and I might have to share them after if that's okay. But we do have some stuff. I don't know if Thomas, you know, readily, but um, I, 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 I am aware of those those benchmarks that we have done some, but uh, off the top of my head, um, I can't quite visualize them at the moment. But um, I can I can certainly follow up with that. Okay, yeah, that that may may be good because it, again, the good news for the tiny ML community is there are more. Uh, capabilities are becoming available from different companies, but uh, sometimes people may get like, hey, do I use this solution versus You need that? a benchmark, yeah, absolutely. You need to have, yeah. And I think uh, each solution is not like one size fits all. As you said, it's very use case dependent too, right? For different use cases, maybe you can you want to use a different solution. And again, for someone who wants to have a very strong, robust, low power connectivity, definitely you have a variety of offerings on the connectivity side, BLE, Wi-Fi, and so on. That's, that, 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 that's really great. Um, so there was a question uh, from Alexander, um, and I think that would be probably a good segue to start into the into the demo part. So he, he's asking if, if there is uh, any possibility to run TinyML on, on EFR32 DG22, and I think that's what I assume you're going to demonstrate next, right? Uh, the 22. Um, so yeah. we're de- demonstrating the 24. Um, right, the year twenty four, right? Yeah, the twenty two is is a lot. Lot. I think this is why. Hence the question. Um, is very limited on RAM, so it's it's only got thirty two k of RAM. So, um, yeah, five twelve k of flash, but thirty two k of RAM. So it would struggle with 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 most things, especially if you wanted wireless connectivity as well. So the protocol stacks are, are you know, uh, pro, you know the BLE stack, for example, takes up around sort of one hundred and thirty k. k flash you know sort of 8 to 10k of nearest 10k of ram so you're not left with a huge amount so um tricky on the on on the 22 to be honest um okay and alexander is asking a very specific follow-on question uh on the 22 uh, can you use uh, edge imply uh, edge impulse uh, ui and kind of uh, edge impulse tools to Cool. At the right. moment, at the moment, we've got two real two main main platforms we use. It's the twenty four and the twelve, and we've selected right. those because um, the others aren't really flexible enough to meet, um, you know, say audio use case or various things like that. So I would say, unfortunately, not in those cases. Uh, I would say the twelve and the, the twenty four are the ones that. But, uh, but now you have more advanced solutions. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, th- thank you for for this uh, uh, elaborations, uh, Andrew, and maybe we can move on to the to the demo part. Yeah, and and for the audience, uh, as you have any questions, please uh, submit them on the Q and A, and and we'll answer them as, as they arrive. Thank you. Okay, yeah. So now I'm going to switch over to just a screen share because um, I thought um, I wanted to demonstrate to you um, how you can quickly connect into uh, our, our partners' cloud platforms. Um, and also, if I have time, which I, I hope I do, I'm going to touch on our MLTK um, uh, and, and the approach you need to take for that. So that, that involves obviously getting at the sensor, data's on the board, sensor data on the board, but also uh, the model and, and the various components you require in our development platform um, to, uh, to achieve that. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you how simple it is um, to get connected first to Edge Impulse and then um, and then uh, uh, send CML. Um, so I'm just going to do it from the start as if you were you, you'd picked up a, you'd picked up an XG24 Thunderboard and you were like, well, what do I do now? So literally, all you do uh, to connect in. Um, sorry, give me a second. I'm just um, just going to pull up a screen. So all you do first of all is um, uh, go to the uh, the GitHub for um, for Edge Impulse, um, and on their GitHub, um, you'll just search for XG24, and then we just just want the XG24 firmware here. So um, we use um, I'll just use GitHub Desktop to just clone uh, clone this repo. So all we all we're doing here is we're, we're basically just acquiring some firmware that enables us to hook into all the sensors and then talk the right language to um, to the uh, Edge Impulse uh, backend, and that's done through a, a kind of a daemon on the command line, which I'll I'll, I'll come on to. Okay, so we now have the firmware uh, available. 
So uh, we, we want this file here. So I'm going to just go into Simply Studio and I'm going to import the project. Now this one takes some time to uh, take some time to build, so I'm not going to uh, uh, pain you with that. Although I may do on a couple of them, but this one is going to take a little bit longer. So I'm going to just show you what we're doing. So all we've done is just file import. We've already got all the um, we've already got all the files from uh, from GitHub, and now we're just going to import the project. So um, if you go to the uh, the GitHub, I mean, the instructions are there uh, to do that, but I'm going to just show you uh, in effect. It's, it's just a matter of, of cloning it. There's a reason uh, that's not clear to me. You need to delete this, but this is, is one of their instructions. Um, one thing missing is the SDK. So you just need to rebuild the SDK from within Studio. And um, what it will do is it will ask you to update to the latest one. Um, I'll come on to some of the little details around uh, Studio, but in essence, the application files can be kept separated from uh, the um, uh, from from the SDK files and some of the auto-generated files. So it's um, it, it means that uh, when you're updating to later SDKs or you're doing various things like that, it's 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 uh, it's very simple. So. Uh, it's just updating now. It'll probably take slightly not longer now we're on a Zoom call. But there you go. It's pulled in, pulled in the latest SDK. Um, and in a moment, I will will start building it. Although this one does take a little bit of time, so I, I'm not going to um, I'm not going to dwell too much on that. Um, I'm going to show. I'm going to build it, but I'm, I'm I've already got a, a a file that I've built. But I'm going to uh, okay. So uh, I will build this. Okay, so on, on the desktop, I did uh, quickly build one because I realized it took some time early on. So um, what I'm going to do is this is, the, this is the binary. So I'm going to use a tool in Simplicity Studio called, uh, um, wait a second, Simplicity Commander. And this is just our standard sort of flashing tool to the kit. So, um, so, okay, so I've already selected that. So I'm going to now flash this code. And now we have the famous LEDs. So um, I'm going to quickly... We have the LEDs connected. So um, now I'm going to uh, connect into... Uh, using the command line. We now need to run run the um, edge impulse daemon. So this is kind of this is kind of like the intermediary between the COM port uh, and their kind of cloud platform. So this is just managing the um, managing the uh, the interface, the communication. So when when we run this um, if everything's working okay, it should connect to the board. And um, okay, so actually, what I should have done is uh, let's let's log into Edge Impulse very quickly. Okay, so I'm I'm already logged in um, uh, from from before. Ah, it's it's just showed up here now. So uh, I should have probably kicked this off before, but I hadn't had any I hadn't got any devices added prior to this. Um, this uh, the action of running this daemon has basically connected me into the the platform, and now I can just name my device. So I'll name it, and then this will update at some point. But um, that's all we need. Um, we need that firmware. Uh, we need to run the the daemon. Uh, and this is provided by uh, Edge Impulse. And um, and if you look here, you'll see all the sensors that were on the board. They're all available through the you know interfaces to all those sensors available through this platform. And so um, so you now you can start on your kind of uh, workflow with with uh, Edge Impulse. So 
see here, I can I can start sampling with uh, with the microphone, or I can I can use the gyro to get some time series data and do sort of uh, gestures or something. So you're basically now you're connected in, um, and that's it. And I think that took me you know seven or eight minutes. Um, so that's all that's required uh, to get going with Edge Impulse. Now, um, I'm going to close this, this daemon. So now I'm going to show you um, very quickly uh, SenseML. So this is this is this is quite. Uh, uh, let's go to their. Sorry, let's go to their GitHub. So again, if we go to the Sentinel GitHub, let's look for the XG24, XG24. Uh, and oh, I like this microphone capture one. So I'm gonna go for the microphone capture one. Uh, and again, I'm gonna clone the um, clone the repo. So we'll go back to GitHub desktop, clone another repo. Yeah, Tom. Sorry, for a sec, for me. Yeah. Now it's a look at Explorer. So we should have now another importable, um, another importable uh, file. So we've got this SLS, which is a format we can import in, in Studio as well. Okay, so let's go back to Simplicity Studio. And it's still building. It's almost done. Um, so I'm going to import uh, our gonna input our SentiML project. So let's have a look. So we go through the same sort sorts of steps again. Oh, it has built now. Finally. So that was the same firmware file we'd uh, we'd used in the previous one. So. So if we look now, uh, yes, yes, yes. Everything is just defaults once you've imported it. Okay, we can build this. It's um. Oh, oh yes, I know why. I haven't updated. Let's tell this is live. I haven't updated the SDK. So one thing about this project is that it, it, if you um, again um, the instructions are, are are pretty clear on their on their GitHub, but uh, one thing you need to do is um, this building. One thing you need to do in in their project is is change the uh, the board rate of um, of the VCOM interface. So if you think about our SOC having a UART which has its own board rate, and then there's a a VCOM interface, virtual COM interface, or USB uh, UART connection. We also need to, to change that to match the board rate. And this particular project uses um, uh, a faster board rate of almost a megabit a second. So in this sort of, so if I right click on the debug adapters and go to launch console, and then go to admin and press enter, I kind of get the console where I can change it. So here I'll do um, serial VCOM config speed uh, 92. One six hundred uh, uh, with the space. Okay, so we've set the set the board right here now. Um, uh, the project's built, so I will now flash it to the part. We have the. Uh, Flashy, flashy lights again. This is always a good sign. And now I'm going to start their um, their tool, the data capture lab, and we're going to uh, connect to that board. Let's bring that across here. So yes, I've already got an existing project here. So that's oh yeah, it keeps changing the 
the screen back so I'm not sharing, so I'll keep, keep bringing it back. But for those who are familiar with the Data Capture Studio, you'll, you'll know that you need to if we switch this to capture mode. We can then use um, uh, we can then use the, uh, the dev kit connection. So we've got the firmware running on there now. Um, connection settings. I don't know. Let's just clear the settings to make sure we connect to the right one. So connection settings, and we just scan for the serial port. And it's definitely not com once. It's com uh, forty nine done. And then we're connected. Now. If I sort of speak into the microphone, you'll see that uh, we can capture samples and and start the the workflow for um, for SenseML. So super quick uh, way of getting going on both platforms. Um, uh, GitHub just import the projects, and really that is that is a very good starting point. You 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 on your on your way then to be able to kind of create your own model and do your own thing. So we've kind of uh, made that uh, well certainly edgy impulse and since uh, made that very uh, very straightforward and, and we've worked with them on that uh, on the firmware so so yeah so that's that's um, that's those two projects so I wanted to to highlight those first um, and now I'm going to talk um, a little bit more about the the expert uh, version so the ML expert version where um, there is a little bit more involved um, we don't have the same sort of uh, uh, eloquent uh, sort of workflow and, and GUI. We we we've got more sort of a tools-based approach. But w but when you are developing the MLTK application, you kind of there's kind of two parts to it. There's kind of the first part, which is where you need to get at the sensor data uh, because that's the the entry into the effective of the model where it does its thing. Uh, and then you need to also create the model as well. So both can be done. So we have, uh, th as I say, this is kind of like a, a super fast, high level uh, uh, overview of, of how to uh, kind of do this. But we do have a lab on both of those. So the first one is getting hold of the sensor data. So the plan is to, I'll quickly show you how to get hold of the sensor data. And once you've got that, you can then obviously use that as the basis to the model. And then I'll show you um, how uh, an example application or some of them we've got where they've acquired some of that sensor data. And then they um, uh, then they uh, uh, input into a model, and we kind of get an, an outcome. Um, so um, we have a uh, for those uh, who are interested, we have a, uh, a GitHub. Um, uh, we have uh, on our Silicon Labs GitHub, we have something called training examples, and um, and in the uh, in the kind of tech lab. Uh, if you, this is relevant to the board, uh, the funder board, uh, you have a number of sessions and I would advise if you would like to go through uh, 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 the procedures to, to really get to a good understanding of, of what we've done with AML and, you know, what we've done with our partners, you can go through some, some really good sessions on that. Session one is just, um, you're just kind of getting access to various sensor data and things. And that's what I'm going to show you. So, So what I've done basically is I've followed all the steps in, in this kind of lab procedure. Um, uh, actually, it's that one, sorry. So this is basically adding, so you've got all those different sensors on the board and, and you know you want to know how to get at them. And this basically provides you all the information you need on how to get at those sensors. Um, in a nutshell, um, adding sensors is pretty much adding software components. So... Um, for example, um, if we wanted to add, say, an I squared uh, S microphone, we can we can add the software component for it, and and th this is kind of our way of pulling in components into the system, which means really the amount of code that you have to write is far less because a lot of it's handled by the adding and removing of components into the system. Um, and like for example, the I squared C. So I've added, I've I've basically gone through that step and I've configured all the sensors and. And, and everything like that, um, and the way you would really get this information is um, you would you would look, you would look at our or you, you would uh, go to our um, user guide. So I'll show you very quickly. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I'm conscious of time. But um, you go to our our user guide for the MG24 Dev Board, which is this one um, UG524, and um, when you're looking at uh, you know, connecting in, you would look at kind of the hardware and the peripherals. And you'll see here, 
but on the I squared C, we've got access to, to all these devices here and the microphone. And then you'll see the port and pins. So really I've been through the lab and you know, can you'll see here that there's two there's two levels to it. On the one hand, there's the I squared C interface, and you'll see I've defined the clock as PC4 and PC5, which is PC4 and PC5 here. So we're connected to the temp sensor. So this is the comms interface. And then we've got the actual sensor itself, which is a component as well. So that's the SI7021. So if I do SI7021, you'll see uh, SI7021. You'll see there's um, we've added this component because this is the one we've got on the board. So we can we add the comms, we can add the sensor, and then we just basically initialize them in the application code. And that's how you get at the sensor sensor data. And then when we flash this, uh, the upshot of what you get at the end is uh let me uh pull up a terminal so uh, let's go for serial okay so that's the sensor one let's just connect flash the this is the um the sensor project and here you go. So this is just the raw data. So you'll see the uh, the nine axis uh, gyro. You'll see the mic, raw mic input. You see the the um, you know, relative humidity temp. And this is the raw data that obviously you know you can either pre-process, do what you want to do. But but the point here is with this this project, and if you go through this lab, you've got access to all the raw data of all the sensors on the Thunderboard. So this makes it um, um, a good good starting point for for doing the model. So um, yeah, uh, feel free to go through that lab if uh, you know because that will be part of kind of the journey. And then the final part I wanted to go on um, is is the um, is the actual machine learning toolkit I mentioned earlier. So um, we have a uh, a follow up uh, uh, talk or, or lab on this where we go into much more detail on how to create a model from scratch. I'll touch on that at the end. This is kind of like a whirlwind tour almost through. Kind of what we've got but um but in terms of creating a model from scratch we'll go over that but um in terms of what we have in simplicity studio um to start with sorry it's uh running a little bit slow oh no, there we go So we have various starting points for, for projects and, and some of the example projects we have for the, the 24 is uh, machine learning ones. So we, you know, we have uh, audio classifier example, model profiler, you know, we have a hello world and all these are using the, um, have used the uh, machine uh, learning toolkit, all the models in these um, have used it. I'm going to take a really simple one, um, uh, voice control lights. And I'll I'll show you this one. So say once so you're pulling the sensor data from your previous projects, and then you'll you'll um, add your project that you've built using uh, uh, with the assistance of of the toolkit into into one of these projects. And the key kind of components to it are um, again I mentioned in the presentation that we've kind of enabled AML through our integration of um, TensorFlow. So you'll see here um, that really what we've done is we've added the TensorFlow like micro software component and then the various kernels uh, suited uh, for this. Um, and that's pretty much all you need to do in terms of getting support for, for the kernel and, uh, and, and the models and everything into, into Studio. Um, and then let me build this well. I'm speaking um, and then from an application standpoint um, the uh, so what we've done really uh, say so this these are all simple examples so we have the system in it um, which basically initializes all the software components and the configuration but where you kind of start development is here so in this case we've got a simple uh, control light um, and what we do is we just create a, a task for it so it's an RTOS task and um, 
we initialize. So once we kick the task off, um, we basically initialize the mic. So we've done that in, in the previous sensor example where we'd, we'd, uh, we'd initialize the microphone just to grab all the data, but this is pretty much doing the same just with the microphone. So we're using the same APIs. So we've got, we kick off, we initialize, uh, we start streaming the mic data. And then um, within our while loop, we then basically go through the, um, we read the audio buffer. So all the mic data that's come in, we read the buffer for it. Um, we then run the inference on the data to see what, you know, what is it? And then we kind of process the output to say, you know, was it an on, was it an off? And um, I know it was super quick going through everything, but but that's the crux of of, of what we're doing. And um, and the model, as I say, uh, actually I'll mention it at the end when this is built. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about kind of the next steps and stuff. But, but that will really assist you on that journey of coming up with a model in the first place. Uh, I'll give you an example of what we've done with it because we have lots of tutorials. Um, where it's sort of end to end, you know, uh, on our GitHub. But I'll come to that at the very end. I just want to get this one built and running and then show you the final example. Actually, I may not wait for this one. I think I actually built this one as well. So let me not waste time looking at that one. So yeah, I, I already, already built that one. So, um, let me use uh, use the tools again in Studio. So I'm conscious I've, I've gone through all this very quick. I'm I'm very aware that I've I've done that. So um, I, I just wanted to try and cover as much ground as I could um, within the time scales. Um, we you know obviously have my information, my my details, and I, I hope that uh, if you have any further questions, we can we can pick up on it. But um, let me go back to the control panel now. So here, uh, okay, so I know why I need to change the um, speed back again. Serial VCOM config speed 195-200, okay. Now we should see it. On, off, off. So we have a very simple model that we've created. Um, so using the MLTK, and that's um, and that's the uh, that simple application. So these are all good starting points, of course, for for when you want to do do your own. So yeah, a whirlwind tour of of um, of, um, of, of some of the quick starts, if you like, for, for getting up and running. Um, I've only got one more thing to say. So I've got some links. Um, so we've got a machine learning landing page. We've got lots of demos. Um, see our partner resources. You don't have all these links in, uh, in, uh, in the presentation when we send it. Um, lots of labs. Um, to, to go through and uh, yeah, to, to finish off. <laughs> yeah, so um, but yeah, so this was a high level integration, uh, sorry, high level uh, introduction to the integrations uh, Silicon Labs currently has done with our partners as well as our kind of homegrown toolkit. Um, the content on our partners workflows as mentioned is very uh, well covered in kind of training material that's, that's already out there. So I'd uh, encourage you to take one of our Thunderboards and, uh, and have a play. Um, I mentioned previously we were doing, hoping to do uh, something, uh, another uh, another one, another um, a talk as well, and and that will be for those who would like to explore more deeply the machine learning toolkit. So we plan to run a kind of a follow up session to cover that in detail. So it'll be it will actually be covered. Um, uh, it will actually focus on the steps required to create a model from scratch. Um, and one such example we've done was uh, this Pac Man game here, and um, we just have kind of voice commands that you kind of control a little Pac-Man. I would show you, but my, my PC doesn't have Bluetooth, unfortunately. But if it did have Bluetooth, I'd be able to to, to um, communicate over Bluetooth and uh, control the little Pac-Man. But that's just one example. But but we do have um, we do have some um, some tutorials. Um, this is my final uh, final thing I want to show you. Uh, 
probably need to get out of here. Yeah, we do we do have some tutorials on our our GitHub. So I'll just quickly point you to those and then I will I'll pass it back. So again this is this is in our um this is in our, our, our the presentation, but but here we've 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 got these are literally end to end guides on, on developing a model as well. So we've got a lot of content there for for those sort of advanced uh, uh, experts in in the kind of domain who who want to uh, use our toolkit. So yeah, so that that's all for me. I hope uh, I hope I wasn't too quick. I, I think I probably was, but um, I uh, I just wanted to say to to uh, get across as much as I could in as short possible time. So. Th th thank you, Andrew, for this uh, great introductory presentation. Definitely a very interesting platform for people to get their hands on. And I think I think the demo part was was amazing. I think it's always good to see how things work work in in in, in real life and in, in, in real time. Yeah. Now I think and we're also looking forward to the to the part two of this. As I say, the kind of the, the guts of, of the machine learning and how how do you do the the models and how do you do the inference and, and all, all those type of things. I think this, this is scheduled to be like in about six weeks, if I recall. So like but very shortly, we have this deep dive into, into the machine learning part. Um, so I think at this point, let me again acknowledge our strategic partners. They're shown here. And then one by one, I think on the next pages, we have uh, them. Uh, if you can advance the, to the next one, Andrew, like a, a real quick. Yeah, we have the executive partners and let's just do them one, one by one quickly. So it's the arm. And then after arm, we have, uh, we have, um, yeah, if you can just uh, do click. Sorry, next one. But yeah, yeah, that's fine. Arm. And then after arm, we have, I believe, um, this click, please, next one. And we have Agent Pulse. And next one, is uh, Qualcomm and the next one is Cintian, I believe. Yes, so they're the executive pa partners and next ones are Platinum partners and they are Deployed and uh, Click Attack and uh, Reality AI and uh, Renaissance, that is Renaissance acquired Reality AI, Sony Semiconductor Solutions. Uh, the gold partners are. Um, Analog devices, Photo Hub, Microsoft, uh, NXP, uh, Sheet Studio, uh, SenseML. I think uh, Andrew showed some examples of SenseML today. Uh, ST Microelectronics, Synaptics, Synsense. And then we have the silver partner, including Silicon Labs. And uh, and I think at this point, the very last one uh, page is just a copyright. And you can go to tinyml.org for more information. Thank you, Andrew, again for this uh, uh, very informative presentation today. And I think we look forward to the part two in, in about six weeks. Thank you all. Great. Thank you. Thanks for thanks for having me. I appreciate it, and thank you everyone for the time.